Hello and welcome back to the point and click devlog, an ongoing series in which today we're asking why is this, this and this good? Like if you're here I have to assume that you agree with me that point and click games are great but like why? Why do people like this genre? It's a question I've been thinking about and not to be presumptuous but I think I have an answer or a compelling theory at the very least. But before we get to that I think it would be remiss of me not to say that one possible answer as to why people like this kind of game is they don't. A lot of people don't in fact. While it's fair to say that the genre has enjoyed something of a resurgence in recent years and that occasionally you might read a tweet like this one from Stuck in Attic Games that shows sales figures that will blow your mind, let's not kid ourselves. The point and click adventure is a cult genre and you could make a reasonable argument that it's a cult genre being mostly kept afloat by middle aged people who remember the 90s and that when we stop buying these games that will be that. That's a fairly bleak assessment but I don't think it's entirely untrue either. However I'm not here to bang nails in the genre's coffin, I'm here to celebrate it. So okay, cautious caveat established. Now let's ask again, why do people like point and click adventure games? And I think to a shallow degree that you can partly answer that question by answering a different one. Why do people like games at all? Well, I guess people like games because they offer an amalgamation of pretty much every kind of art form, with the added bonus of being interactive. A great game has the plot and visual spectacle of the best movies, book quality writing, awe inspiring music and visuals that you could hang on your wall. They're like the ultimate art form because they offer all of that while also letting you become an active participant rather than a passive one. And it's the same for point and click adventure games, right? The best ones are fun adventures with great artwork, iconic characters and memorable moments. But there's a difference here and it's a difference that makes fans of the genre really love the genre and arguably that makes its detractors really hate it. But to me it's not what you probably think. If you think I'm going to say that what makes this genre different and what makes people really love it is the puzzles, well I'm sorry to disappoint. See when I think about my favourite point and click games and what I loved about playing them it's never the puzzles. The puzzles are a great vehicle for moving the game from point A to point B but they're never why I play them. And if you think about it, if you remember a specific puzzle from a point and click game it's almost always because it was overly obtuse or difficult. Personally I think about puzzles in this genre specifically the same way I think about my broadband. When it works I forget that it exists. I only really think about it when it's giving me trouble. Luckily in and around the puzzles, point and click games tend to be stupidly rich in story, character, atmosphere and world building. Because they have to be, you know, they don't have compelling gunplay or platforming or racing to fall back on. They have puzzles that serve a purpose and they have setting and story. In that way, you could think of adventure games as the perfect natural midpoint between traditional games and books. In both, you're there for the characters you meet, the scrapes you get into and the, well, the, the adventure. And now that we've established that, we are honing in on my core thesis, my key thinking behind why this genre perseveres and why people love it. And here it is. Coziness. Or if you're of the Danish persuasion, he, 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 she, 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 this word, she, which I've given up trying to pronounce. By this I mean that in a point and click adventure game, much like with a good book, you get to go on an adventure but without the tension. Now stay with me, I'm not saying that these games don't have tense moments because they often do, but what I am saying is that purely through the nature of their mechanics, they have more in common with sitting by a window reading a book while it rains outside than they do with Call of Duty. They're cosy experiences. 
Think about it. How many scenarios in point and click games revolve around sneaking, talking, or breaking your way into places you shouldn't be? Quite a lot, right? But while in an Assassin's Creed game, that scenario would bring with it some degree of tension, in a traditional adventure game, there is none. And again, that's because of the mechanics. Take this scene, for example. I'm George Stobart in Broken Sword, and I need to sneak into a room in this hotel. It's a risky mission, but what happens if I, as the player, don't do anything? What if I just stop? absolutely nothing. There's no pressure on me in this scene. And that's the key. If this was GTA, I'd accidentally upset a pedestrian just by standing here. If this was Far Cry, I'd eventually be eaten by a bear. But standing here in this game, soaking up the atmosphere of the hotel and being totally inactive is, in my mind, functionally the same as putting your book down to have a sip of coffee. You're not going to be hassled by the book to carry on and the game won't do that either. You get all the wish fulfillment aspects of going on an adventure without any of the stress. You get to travel the world without having to kill anyone. You get to explore hotels, ghost ships, museums, and evil corporate HQs without a time limit. You get pure escapism without raising your heart rate. And crucially, you can just do nothing. Your character can be literally drowning and you've still got about 10 minutes to get up and grab a snack without even pausing the game. So that's my theory. People love point and click games because they are safe spaces. They are rainy afternoons, they're naps, and they are cozy. And that is exactly why I love them too. Anyway, this unsolicited and unprompted ramble is about it from me this week. I've only got one main shout out to make and that is to draw your attention to the currently ongoing Kickstarter campaign for Lucy Dreaming, which is a charming and really funny pixel art game currently under development by Tall Story Games. If you like British humour and old school verbs, definitely consider backing it to help make their dream a reality. I'll stick a link to that Kickstarter in the description. And lastly, remember that you are always welcome in our community Discord server, which is also a safe space and in which you can get questions answered, receive development help, or just shoot the breeze. If that sounds like your kind of thing, the link to that is also in the description and I would love to see you there. If not, look, no worries. Hopefully I will see you in the next one. Bye.